Clarissa, it's fabulous to see you. Um, we're in a restaurant overlooking the beautiful city of Newcastle. Uh, welcome back. Uh, I know you've been here before. Um, seeing Savannah Marshall in a boxing ring. Uh, you're back again to see her on her, her PFL debut. Um, you're, you're intertwined, the two of you, going way back to the amateurs and the winner piece. It's, uh, it's something that's always going to be there, isn't there? This rivalry. Um, to me, it's not. You know, I think that we are intertwined and we'll be part of each other's lives for a long time, but the rivalry is there, there's not one. I'm the best. Okay, there's not a rivalry. It's not, you know, they, I think somebody interviewed me earlier and they said, you guys are one and one. I'm like, no, I'm undefeated in the pros. We're one and oh. We're one and oh. One and oh in the pros, but yeah. there is that amateur loss. So yeah. that was where the story started, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The story started, but I just can't say like we're one and one. And it's not like the same record, like professionals is professionals, amateurs is amateurs. If that's the case, then we got to talk about how she got like 20 losses in amateur. And we're not going to talk about her 20 losses, so we can't just dwell on my one. But um, but it is the only defeat. Yeah, in amateurs. <laughs> <laughs> and you're over it, right? Yeah. <laughs> Long over it. Um. Well, we fought at the O2 in front of 20,000 of her fans where I won unanimous decision to become undisputed champion at 160 again, again. So right now she, she wants her lick back like I wanted my lick back for 10 years from the amateurs. So she feels that if we fight in MMA, it gives her more of a chance because she can use kicks and elbows and knees and chokes and stuff of that nature. And um, she's come all the way from boxing to chase me in MMA, which, um, um, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm happy she did that, but I just want to fight against the, I want to fight against her, plus I want to try to become PFL world, world champion. You know, so it's like, I have big dreams, but it's like her big dream is just like her, her gold medal, her big fight is Savannah versus Claressa and Savannah getting her hand raised. That's her big fight. My big fight, I've already beat Savannah already and got my hand raised. And if she wants to fight in MMA, we can fight in MMA. If she want to play basketball and run track and, <laughs> hey, play checkers. <laughs> I believe I can win in everything against her. You're both highly competitive, though. Yeah. And that's yeah. great. That's great. Very highly competitive. I think I'm more competitive than her, but she's, she's competitive and she's a great fighter. She asked me to come over here to watch her fight. And in person, I was like, I'm not coming. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not coming. And she was like, you know, please, Clarice, to make you know, make time in your busy schedule. You know, that's how she talk. And I just was like, I think about it. All right, I think about it. But um, I just remember when they told me that in Saudi, in Riyadh, when I was getting ready to fight, the day before, like the weigh-ins, they were like, hey, Savannah's coming over to watch you fight. And I remember having that energy, like, oh, I'm about to show you some stuff, girl. I'm about to, like, whenever she's ringside or she's there, or I know that she's gonna be there, it gives me a, another bump of energy, you know? So I was like, you know what? It's only right that I go over to Newcastle and give her that same bump of energy for her debut. I was motivated when you came to my show, so hopefully I'll give you that same motivation and you go out there and you do what you do. Oh. <laughs> oh. There's some good luck for you, don't you? Uh, oh, that's a way you Wanted me on, but it happened. No, but you still got to touch it though. It's good luck, girl. Charles, it's Pablo. Don't no. touch another cat's gold. Oh, you're Don't crazy. Touch gold. That's how you get so it. Suspicious. Oh, you think I'm trying to crazy, don't you? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I know the, the press, we all build it up as some sort of hatred, but you bumped into each other earlier. There, there is that, there's that big respect between the pair of you. And also, you're right, asking each other for advice or just being friendly at times as well. It's fine. You've shared a ring in the amateurs. You've shared a ring in the pros. You've you know each other, right? There's there is a spirit there. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I know Savannah better than she knows herself. If you, I mean, the homework I had to do on her for our fight. You know, I go into deep homework on my opponent. Like, what was the upbringing? Did they grow up in a two-family home or a one-family home? What did they eat? You know, um, I know stuff about Savannah. She doesn't know that I know. <laughs> you know, so that's. That's how... Do you think you'll always be one step ahead of her? Two. I'll always be two steps. 
And um, sometimes I'll be, I'll be 10, but, but I know that people say like, oh, you know, do you think that me and Savannah could be friends in the future? I feel like we're friends now, you know, but one minute, it's hard to live in, to live in, de, to live in defeat. I feel like right now I'm living rent free in her head because of our last fight. Um, to, to lose in front of 20,000 of your home town fans and, you know, to come off of that undefeated record. I mean, she was 12 and no, 11 or 10 knockouts. So in the whole lead up, it, everybody was just predicting, oh, Savannah's gonna knock her out late. She's gonna knock her out late. Late round knockout for Savannah. And then for me to go in there and dominate the first five to six rounds, and then she had a competitive two rounds maybe where she was like okay we can see her power we see her strength we see her skill but i still dominated most of the fight and when i watched the fight back i watched it back about 15 20 times now i won eight rounds to two if you want to be nice you can say seven three but eight rounds you won the fight yeah, yeah, yeah. You won the fight. And then she came back and, and she, of course, became a two-weight champion. So she Yeah, did, against Franchise. Yeah, and so she did get that. But, but it is true. She, she wants to, yeah, to she follow you to. into the cage. There's no question about that. She wants to beat me in something. Boxing didn't do it for her, so she wants to beat me in MMA. And, I mean, she's training hard for it. Yeah. Before we talk about her debut, mm -hmm. how have you found your fights in MMA for the PFL? Each fight I get better. Um, it's, it was, it's difficult to train for MMA. That's why, like I said, we will see on Saturday because when I first came to MMA, I spent four to five months, four hours a day training MMA. And most of the time was spent on my back and working on defensive to takedowns and doing cage work. So you spend four hours a day, four months at a time, away from your family, away from your friends, away from your you know, significant other, it builds something in you and you learn a lot. And I think MMA, learning new stuff can come off as fun, but we all know if it ain't hurting, it ain't working. You know, pain is power. And I don't know if she put herself through as much pain as I did before my pro debut coming in. Why did you do it? For, it, for the challenge? Yeah, you know, those MMA girls are a little cocky, you know? <laughs> I know that's a lot coming from me, but those girls are just, just that. yeah, they're like, oh, we're better than all the women boxers. We can beat them in a real fight. They would never come to our world. Like, like their world is so much more superior than ours. And we all know boxing is harder than MMA. Like MMA, if you don't, if you don't have good hands, you can use your feet. If you don't have good feet, you can go for takedowns and go for submissions. But you and your opponent are never equal because you're a black belt, they're a white belt, but they have kickboxing and a little jujitsu experience and maybe some wrestling, but you're never like, oh, this person has boxing, this person has boxing, kickboxing, black belt. They're, they're never equal. So somebody always- Different specialties. Has, right, different specialties. But in boxing, you got your left and you got your right hand. And that's what you connect your, that's how you win the fight. To me, it's a more fair fight than MMA. And I, I think to anybody it should be. So when I hear people say that, oh, when you fight me in a real fight, it's like, to me, a real fight is boxing. It's the most fair fight. You got your left hand, you got your right hand, you got your two legs, and we get to see who can either be the bigger puncher, sweet science, um, have the best plan, who's in the best shape, um, who got the better experience, like you get to see that inside the ring, inside the cage, you see the belts get changed every year. There's never a consistent champion because there's always somebody who have a different specialty that can up the other person. It's never equal. Well, that's fascinating though. It's never equal. Savannah said to me that when she first saw you in the cage, she was laughing. She thought, she's no good at this. She's she did, this. she did. I remember this. <laughs> I remember an interview, she said, oh, she looks so silly rolling around in the cage. Looks so silly, you know, she's running from me. I remember, I remember this like yesterday. Did you think you haven't tried this and you're gonna, you're gonna find out if you do? I remember when I, when I seen that interview, cause I, like my first MMA fight, I got caught in an iron bar. Um, I got out of an iron bar. 
I lost the first two rounds, which were five minute rounds. So I lost the first 10 minutes of the fight mm -hmm. and came back with a huge victorious knockout in the third round. So we can right. breathe. Yes, thankfully, you know, cause I let my hands go and sprawled on time. But I just remember like after that, I was very, very proud and very, very happy and proud of myself because I put in so much hard work, you know, and leading up to my debut, it was so many times where I would go back to my dorm at Jackson Wink and I'd just be crying like, why am I doing this? Because it was so hard. Really? It was so hard. And it was like, I didn't understand jujitsu for the first month and I was there four months and then one day it, it finally clicked and I was like, okay, okay, now we're getting somewhere. But I, but, I went, but I went home for a month and I just was like, I went to the gym today, I trained four hours and I feel like I don't know nothing. I took notes, I watched film and I don't, I don't know nothing. But you stuck at it. You've had three fights now. Do you feel that you're improving? Do you like it more? Do you? Oh, what? Of course. Do you want more and more now? Well, like I said, or to I mix it up. I want to be, be, I want to be PFL world champion. That's my overall goal. Um, I want to give boxing what I want to give boxing my best this year and possibly next year. But I do want to spend a whole year or a year and a half just that MMA throughout my career when, whenever I choose to because I really want to go for the PFL World Championship. I want to prepare for the season and I want to fight through the season and be one of the women standing there at the end fighting for the million dollars, you know. Uh, right now the PFL champion is Larissa Pacheco. Bad chick, you know, bad chick. Got, she got my respect. I think I saw somewhere she said she got better hands than me. I disagree. But really? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, okay. But she she do knock girls out. She hurt them. Yep. And she beat Kayla Harrison, who I have a lot of respect for, and went to the Olympics twice with. We got our gold medals the same years. So when I have things like that waiting ahead, you know, I'm like, that's what I want to, you know, prepare for. Savannah's told me that it's really tough. The training's been really really odd for her and she's loved it uh the challenge but she's found it incredibly difficult and what she doesn't love about it and she doesn't really know what to expect i think on on saturday night what do you think will happen what does she love about it i think she loves the challenge i think she loves the fact she's learning something different new mm -hmm. techniques um putting herself out of her comfort zone okay that sort of thing yeah so what's your ex though what did I ask? How do we think she's going to do on Saturday night? Putting it all together, how do you think she'll? Well, I just transition. I just talked to her, and she looks to be in good energy. Um, a bit nervous, which I was the same way, you know, same way. Um, before my pro debut in MMA, I was crying a couple hours before, where I was just like, I have to win this fight. There's so many doubters and. I just remember being like super emotional, like to where I got emotional, to where I cried before it. So kind of like how Mike Tyson said he used to cry before his fights. You know, I found myself having a moment like that and I just was like, what the fuck was that? It never happens to me in boxing. <laughs> no. So to happen to me in MMA, I knew it meant a lot to of me. Of course, because you're not sure what's going to happen, right? Yeah. And, as much as you prepare. Yeah. And it's like you've been training, you've been preparing, but you also have an opponent who I mean, you can't do much homework on it. It's not a lot of film. Um, you don't know what their game, are, are they going to respect your boxing and come in there and just take you down? Or are they going to try to stand up with you and say, forget your boxing. I know how to punch too. Like, it's so many things to think about, like kicks and knees and takedowns. So um, she will go through all that. And honestly, when I walked inside the cage, one thing I remember from every fight is when you hear that when they lock you in the cage. And it's probably one, one of the most nerve wracking things I've, I've ever experienced because I, I, I heard it and I wanted to tell myself to look, but it would have freaked me out completely. So even I, you? Even me, when I, when I, just to be locked in somewhere, knowing that, hey, it's like, it's like to me, I was like, if you want to get out of here, you got to fight your way out of here. So they're not going to unlock the door unless you win. That's my mindset. But when I heard it, I was like, it's time to bring the savage out. You know, it's time to bring the dog out and you got to fight your way up out of here. This girl not finna just lay down for you. You got to go out here and you got to do what you do. You want her to win, obviously, the story goes on. So what will your advice be with your experience to Savannah? My advice, like I told her today, um, stay calm, you know, do what you do. 
you got big hands, you punch really hard, don't underestimate that. You know, don't be nervous to do that. And I told her up in Saudi, hey, sprawl and brawl. This is the, to me, it's a, it's a street fight. I don't know how many of those she's been in, but I've been in quite a few. <laughs> and, um, hey, just wherever the fight goes, fight that fight. And then get back to your fight that you want to get to. So I told her, hey, sprawl and brawl. Like, her legs are way longer than mine. Those are targets for people. But you got to know what to do with your legs. You know, if somebody comes in for a takedown, kneel. You know, um, she wants to get on the floor. She said that she wouldn't just doesn't want to win with her hands. She wants to experience everything. But yeah, OK, hey, if the knockout comes, you've oh. got to take it right. <laughs> she do not. You no, no, you do not want to experience being on the ground with somebody who got more ground experience than you. That doesn't even make sense. No, you don't. You don't want to go there. No, you don't. It's you, she's doing this in front of how many people are going to be today? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Ah, oh, yeah, right. In her place, new girls. What if the girl get behind her and try to choke her? Yeah. You want to deal with that? Yeah. I don't. I don't. We used to our opponents being right there in front of us mm -hmm. or hitting the angle, going here, going there. Feet, feet are used for very different things in boxing. <laughs> it would be a nightmare. I don't even, if I even feel somebody get to slipping behind me, I go, I just put my chin down and grab my neck because when, when they get behind there and they go for the choke, stop it. Stop. <laughs> like, no, I can't believe she said that. That, that. that was dumb. What happens? What do you think happens on Saturday night? What's the outcome? Um, I think the outcome is that she wins. I think that she will struggle. I think that she will struggle, especially if she has a girl who's, who doesn't care about, who, a girl who can take a punch mm -hmm. and get to her legs and take her down. That's when we'll see what Savannah is really made of. Well, we see Morelli, she, she comes in, she's, she's, her debut is over in what, 12, 13 seconds or something? I mean, she can, she- But she, she also has- Two defeats, yeah. Two defeats, and with her having two defeats, did she get knocked out yeah. or did she go to four rounds? No. She Both times? Stopped. I think, I haven't seen the, the, the video, but I think she got stopped. Are you sure? I was about to say, because when you've been in there 15 minutes and you've been able to actually get in there and experience some stuff. I know she's a kickboxer. I know she's had loads of experience. I haven't, I wasn't rounds. able to find much on her either, but the 12 second knockout I seen of her, chin was up in the air. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, that's something I hope that Savannah's seen. And she don't be so nervous to where she going and like she said, she want to go to the ground. No, you don't. You want to hit this girl on the chin and put her lights out. Yeah, with That's what you want to do. Gloves as well. That's what you want to do. Of course you do. Four ounces? Come on now. That's what you and want to do. And she hits hard. I know. <laughs> Listen, I've never said something I didn't hit hard. Um, do I think she punches harder than me? No. I was able to feel her punch side of the ring, and I think, um, if, I think that's what shocked her in our fight, that, you know, they cracked all these jokes about pillow fists, but I punch hard too, but Savannah, she has a good setup, big punch. And when she lands it, the punch that she wants to land, it's, it's very powerful. Best laid plans go out of the window. We've seen that so many times in, in boxing, mm -hmm. but Savannah wins, we hope, tomorrow night. And then at some point it's, it's gauge time, isn't it? The two of you, it has to happen. St. James's Park, they're talking possibly here in front of a huge, huge crowd. Boo, boo, no. Savannah owes me a fight in the U.S. and she knows that. So if we're not going to fight in the U.S., we can fight in Saudi. Money talks. Yeah, Clarissa, but you know that. Yeah, but also too light. You don't care. You don't care if you come here. I do. Really? I've seen the red slippers in Cardiff. I've seen you have some fun over here. You know, you know my way you are, no? No, it's, it's all right, but, well, I love fighting over here, but it's the fact, like, she owes me a fight. She owes me a fight, and I'm a superstar in America. And she's my dance partner, so come dance with me in America. If she won't even be fair, come fight me in boxing in America. Then we can do the fight for MMA over here. But let's, but let's make it fair. We shouldn't have to do all of our fights over here. And I've won. Dance partners, definitively. That's, that's going to be the story, isn't it? I mean, I know that you've got another fight, end of July. Mm -hmm. We're going to light heavy, maybe heavy. It's, it, we, we talked earlier about how many belts mm -hmm. you could end up being, how many divisions you, you've now conquered. Mm -hmm. um, almost too many to count, but you just love challenges, don't you? I do. I'm a competitor. 
And um, I believe that we can do all this talking and stuff, but I'm an action person. Like, if somebody- You're a talker to you. Yeah, but- Put yourself down. I back my stuff up though. <laughs> but that's why I talk because it's like a thing of, I said this and I know I said it. And when I said it, I felt it. But can we all do what we say we can do? So far I've proven that I can, but there are some things that people say that they can do and they don't do it. And it's like, to me, I love that, you know, part of it. Like you can say, oh, I can, I can go and get a doctorate degree. You can say that, but if you don't go to school and put in the work, you can't get the degree. You know what I'm saying? So you can say, well, I could have been a doctor if I just would have, well, go and do it. So when it, when, when it comes to fighting and I hear, you know, like in our lead up, oh, I can knock Clarissa Shields out. I hit harder. I'm a bigger puncher. I'm the better fighter. I'm smarter. You know, when I hear stuff like that, well, when we get in the ring, that's where it all comes out at. That's when you get put to the test. So I was able to prove that everything I said was right and what she said was wrong. And that's just what I like to do. Action. Fighting is like, yeah. put it all out there and let's see who really about it. Actions speak louder than words, but your words are pretty good as well. We love the energy. We love that. That's part of the yeah. business, part of the I game. Learned, I learned from the greatest Muhammad Ali. So. The truth is in the ring or in the smart cage and mm -hmm. it will happen again at some point. You will meet. Yeah, it will. And it doesn't matter which one of me. Like I said, we can fight MMA, fight boxing, run track, play checkers, play basketball. I win in all of them. End of July, you're back. Yeah, heavyweight. Excited? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, 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 re I'm ready to see what these little hands can do to those heavyweight girls. Um, you know, heavyweight boxing has been something so huge in the sport of boxing throughout time. And now I'll have my name mentioned with Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield, Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder. Crazy. And I fought as low as 154 pounds. So to be jumping up two weight classes, the fight holds its challenges for sure. But I feel like my skill and my power and my experience will get me the W and that I'll be able to show like now I don't have to lose the weight because I have to lose weight to make 60 and 54. I think that they'll be able to see my full power because I won't be so, um, you know, drained from making weight. So we can see how strong I really am, how big my punches really are. And I just can't wait to hear how they sound, honestly. We're looking forward to that, both in boxing terms, but also in PFL terms. You're loving it, and you want to be that PFL oh, world I'm, champion as well. I'm, I am not loving MMA. I hate when people say that. <laughs> it looks that way. <laughs> I mean, I won my last fight. I got out of an arm bar. I won, it, but it was, it was a split. To me, I thought I won unanimously, but it, it was a split, and I still have so much work to do in MMA. What about the one you lost? We haven't talked about that. Yeah, when I, I lost to Abigail, I felt like I won that fight too. Like it was a split decision loss, but I just felt like as far as in the damage, I caused more damage to her than she did, did to me. Did it upset you that you got that loss because of, oh, yeah. you don't lose? Oh yeah, it pissed me off really bad. I mean, but you know what? The loss didn't, the loss didn't feel as bad as it felt when I lost to Savannah and the amateurs. It, it was like, I had to give myself grace with MMA because it was like, I remember telling myself, like, when I was really mad about the fight and I was crying after the fight and I was just pissed off, I'm like, how did I lose a split decision? I put in all this time, I lost. And then I remember telling myself, like, you're not the best fighter in, in MMA, stupid. And when I said that to myself, I was like, damn, I, I, you're right. You know, let's not jump the gun here. <laughs> so me telling myself that, and you're just like, give yourself grace. You trained hard. You lost a split, you didn't get submitted, you didn't get knocked out. You just lost a split decision against a girl that got way more experience than you. Like, we all wanna have the perfect story where you win, win, and you win, but it's all about how you come back. And that's what I was uh, saying to myself. But I remember when I lost in the amateurs, it was three, four months before the Olympics. Mm -hmm. And I just remember hearing all the, all the negative comments. Oh, she's too young to be going to the Olympics. All the other girls are older than her. She's not strong enough. She's not skilled enough. Um, that tall Savannah girl beat her. She's gonna beat her again if they if they match up. Any any tall girl can beat Clarissa. She was like, I remember hearing this stuff, and I even heard you know this is so far back then. But Marlene 
was talking to somebody in our room and she didn't know I was in the room and she was like, you know, Clarissa's not even going to get a bronze and medal. Like, I don't even know why she's here. She just punches fast and she has no skill. And she was really upset when she was on the phone talking to whoever she was talking to. But I remember um, when Marlene had said that and she realized I was in the room and she turned around and I mean, she had this look of like, of like just crazy fear because I'm dangerous and I, I can be pretty more dangerous when I'm, when I'm upset. But I remember being like this 70 year old girl looking at my, like somebody I looked at as a sister and as a role model. I remember being like hurt, but her saying that gave me so much power and fuel. Cause it was like, I'm going to prove you so wrong. And I just told them like, I don't want to share rooms with her. Get me in a different room. Cause we were in the same, in the same little apartment. I said, get her away from me. Like, no. But um, I remember every time I fought, um, and, I, and I fought three times each Olympics, but every time I fought, she would come and be like, Chris, I'm so sorry, you know, I love you, good job. I'm, 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 I'm like, I want you to win. But I don't think she know that without that moment, I don't think I would've, I don't think I would've won a gold medal. It was like, she gave me such, it hurt my feelings, but it also gave me like, you know what? I'm about to show her not to ever doubt me and I'm gonna show everybody on Team USA and all over the world that when you doubt me, that's when I show up. Fuel to the fire, you conquered London, you conquered Rio, you've conquered boxing. Can you conquer the smart cage? Mm, look at you, look at you. Um, I can conquer the smart cage with a lot of hard work. That's why I said, I know that, I don't know when, but I will be giving MMA a year and a half of my time. I don't know when, because I don't know what can happen with boxing and when I'll get the 10 million or $15 million Saudi Arabian money from Turkish Ali, <laughs> but. <laughs> we were talking about that earlier. Yeah, but you will give it at some point. Absolute and I will give dedication. it, and then I will, yep, absolute dedication, no distractions, and we will see what I'm made of, but people got to know that there's no way I put in that much time and dedicate myself and don't win. Like, it's, to me, it's just impossible. Like, when you put in the hard work and you train hard and you dedicate yourself and you sacrifice, there is no other option but to win. So I feel like I can conquer it. I just have to do it. I have to do it my way. And my way is P5. You know what that is? I know you're going to tell me. Yes. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. I, I, I literally live by that. You know, I, I go, I live by that. Every fight, every MMA fight, um, when I have speaking engagements, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Like that's, that's just what I live by. Totally agree. It's been a pleasure. Same. Great, great to have you here. My guy.